Welcome to the Bible Momming Podcast, where we are parenting by the book. I am your host, Paula Whitten. This podcast is for women who struggle with regular mom stuff, but also long to have their kids grow closer to Christ. It's a lifetime journey, and we're in it together. As a real mom, you just never know where I'll be podcasting from, but I'll always be available for you. Now let's get started. Hey, mamas. How are you doing today? Today we are talking about grace, what it is, and how to have more of it in your family. Right now I am sitting in my home office, which uh, can occasionally have cars drive by, so I apologize if you hear that in the background. This is a little bit of my quiet time in the day, so I'm really excited to have this podcast available for you all. I'm also excited that we just launched the podcast and a lot of people are listening to it. You all are fantastic. The Bible Momming group is growing and I'm just really, really happy to have you here. Big challenge though, we need some reviews on that website. So please, if you're listening on Stitcher, on iTunes, wherever it is, please make sure you leave a review because reviews are just amazing gold on the internet and All of a sudden, iTunes pays attention and goes, hey, people are listening because somebody reviewed it. Please be that blessing today and and give the podcast a review. If you're liking it, that's awesome. I'm on just about every social media venue, and I'm called Paula Widden everywhere. That's W-H-I-D-D-E-N, Paula Widden. Right now, like I said, my oldest is currently studying for college in the other room, and my youngest is at school and on one of her two days that are on the campus. So this is my precious quiet time, but I am excited to spend it with you. So let's talk about grace. This is one of those things that everyone likes to receive, but most people hate to give. It messes with our egos. It messes with our pride. We find ourselves saying things like, I have the right to do whatever, whatever, or what's wrong with that? I think there's some confusion out there as to what grace really is. So let's let's be clear on this first. Grace is not prayer at dinner. There is no spot in the Bible where it says grace is a prayer at dinner or any meal for that matter. In this case, grace is also not about how we walk or how we talk. We're not graceful. This is not what we're talking about, though I have my theories on that word. I wonder if gracefulness came out of being a person who is filled with grace. That's a theory I have, though I don't know any history on that word. Grace, what it really is, is forgiveness without conditions. It is letting go of a debt that somebody owes you and saying, I'm not going after that anymore. Grace brings up the whole idea of conditional versus unconditional. And moms, we do this all the time. Dads do it too. But we're we're often loving on our kids and doing things for them even though they don't deserve it. We don't always explain that to them. We don't always make it clear what's going on, mostly because we don't always have the words for it. But it is something we often do. Ironically, though, it's also something we can struggle with. You see, we, we, we have a hard time applying it to people around us because, like I mentioned, our egos are in play. And none of us wants to just let go. We want to say, no, I'm entitled to da-da-da-da-da. Who is grace really for? Well, of course it's for us, and Jesus gave it to us. But let's get practical in our homes, okay? It's for our husbands. It's for the time he comes in and he's so tired from the drive home that he doesn't even talk to you. It is for the time that He doesn't mow the lawn or take off the trash or whatever his regular job of the day is. He doesn't do it and you're frustrated. That's what grace is for. Grace is for our children. When they say that horrible thing that just cuts to the quick and sometimes they do it on purpose and sometimes they do it on accident, but it still hurts. Grace is for our friends who don't always say the right thing at the right time, who don't always text when we wish we had a good text, who don't always decide to call us up and say, hey, come on over. Grace is also for our church. Churches are made up of normal people doing an abnormal thing, and they mess up. They are not perfect. They need 
grace, not just from Jesus, but also from us. Grace is also for leaders, leaders of corporations, leaders of companies, leaders of businesses, leaders of countries. These are people who carry the load in a very, very real way. I remember hearing about a CEO who made it a point to park his car farthest away from the company so that he had to walk through the parking lot and look at every car of the people he worked with and who worked for him. And it was a reminder to himself that he is making sure all those people and all those families have jobs. Those leaders, even when they make mistakes, and they will do it, they carry a massive burden and they need grace. Grace is also for the guy who took your parking spot even though you were lapping the parking lot gazillion times and thought you had it. Grace is something we need to live inside of and give daily. And even though we are deeply aching for more people to give it to us, the more we give it away, the more we also receive it from Christ. A lot of us are familiar with the the old golden rule. I don't know if everybody knows that that actually came from the Bible. It is found in Matthew 7, 12. It says, do to others whatever you would like them to do to you. That is the essence of all that is taught in the law and the prophets. Jesus was speaking here and he was basically letting people know, you know, those laws, the Ten Commandments, the extended laws beyond the Ten Commandments, all that stuff. The whole point of them is that we need to treat others with respect. We need to give grace. Do to others whatever you would like them to do to you. So we all want it, right? We all want grace. I mean, it's awesome. When somebody lets go and says, that's fine. I'm not, I'm not going to ask for money back. Or that's fine. I'm, I'm, I forgive you. And I'm not upset. And I'm not holding on to it. And I do still want to be friends. We all want it. But maybe we're not receiving it. And that's, that just doesn't mean we can't give it. Jesus gave it to us. For those of us who've uh, who've said, hey, I want Jesus to be the, the leader of my life and guide me, um, we look at a lot of the words he said, and we look at all, a lot of the words that are in the Bible that help us to understand him and what he was thinking, what he was talking about better. And the Bible talks very clearly about grace. In Acts 15, 11, it says, we believe that we are all saved the same way by the undeserved grace of the Lord Jesus. The Apostle Paul, who was telling people about Jesus after the fact, said in Ephesians 2, 8, 9, he said, God saved you by his grace when you believed, that is, believed in Jesus and what he did. And you can't take credit for this. It's a gift from God. Salvation is not a reward for the good things you've done, so none of us can boast about it. Now, if we recognize grace as undeserved forgiveness, then when we read Paul's comments in Ephesians, it becomes very personal. Ephesians 4.32 says, Instead, be kind to each other, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, just as God, through Christ, has forgiven you. Mamas, a lot of us get angry. A lot of us get angry. We get frustrated because momming is hard. But that is a bigger opportunity to give grace and to understand the depth of of God's grace for us, God's grace for you as a result. Our kids are watching and they're learning from us. Like it or not, we are role models. We we don't always want to be in that place. It's not like we get to control these details. Some of us got kids by surprise and whoopsie daisy, here we are, we're parents. But still, we are the role models. There's just no way around it. Whatever we teach and live is what they will grab onto. Now, sometimes they will grab to go to the exact opposite only because we drove them nuts, but that's, that is not the ultimate goal in parenting. Often, even when we do bad things, they will end up doing what we did, not just what we say. So we want them to learn things like this. We want them to learn grace. Imagine if our kids are forgiving people and they don't hold that bitterness in their hearts 
Imagine what they would be like. And we can help. We can help them do that. Imagine what your marriage would be like if you're not holding on bitterly to the frustrations of the lack of perfection on the part of your husband. Imagine if he did the same for you. Because we all know we are less than perfect. So how do we do it? <laughs> how do we do it? Here's, here's what we do. One, recognize your limitations. We cannot and will not give on the same scale as God. His capacity is way greater than ours. This takes practice. Practice, 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 practice. And in spite of that common expression that practice makes you perfect, no, it does not. Practice does not make you perfect, but it does make you better than when you started practicing. The second thing, you have to have rules so that you can forgive. I know what? Paula, where did the rules idea come from? Our kids can't possibly know they're breaking the rules or breaking our hearts or breaking uh, their friends' hearts if they don't understand what rules are. They need them. It's helpful. I know a lot of us grew up with the idea that rules are just a burden, that rules are horrible, that rules just knock down your creativity. But rules also give you an amazing boundary to have fun. I'm a researchaholic. I love to read research, especially stuff that's been done on um, understanding kids and growth and, and human development. I love that stuff. Just I just eat it up. And I will always remember a, a study where some psychologists decided they were going to see how kids reacted between the differences between having a fence and not having a fence. They thought it would be great at schools if you had this big open space for kids to play in rather than having them have to be fenced. And what they discovered was that when the kids had no fence, they didn't play as much, they didn't have as much fun, they stayed toward the center and they stayed toward each other. When the fence was up, then suddenly they were using the whole space, the whole field, going to the deep corners, even going up to the edge of the fence. And that is what rules do. Rules enable our kids to float inside them and have fun. In Romans 5.20, it tells us about how God did sort of the same thing. It says, God's law was given so that all people could see how sinful they were. But as people sinned more and more, God's wonderful grace became more abundant. You see, Knowing that you're doing something wrong makes you aware of when somebody is taking care of you and saying, it's okay, I'm not going to hold the burden on, hold on to the burden. I, I, I get that that's weird. I get that that doesn't make sense, but I've lived it. I've seen it. It's amazing. You don't have to have like rules up the kazoo. Just come up with things that are some boundaries in your family that will help your kids dance inside of it. They will push the edge. They will. Because that's what kids do. Then you can have grace. Then you can help them understand forgiveness. And understanding that enables you to give it and receive it when you're adults. If you never had that as a kid, you probably know how frustrating and stressful that is to try to figure that out. Imagine if our kids get that earlier. Now, number three... As a way of how do we how do we do this grace thing? So you're going to get tired of trying. You're going to get tired of doing this. Do it anyway. Our kids will push up against the fence. They will try things. They will tr- push the edges. I mean, I knew when I was a parent, I knew that when parents said don't do something, that was mean meant kids would want to do it. I didn't realize how often that happens until I was a parent. And I still tell my kids not do not to do things, but it's amazing to me how often they just want to do things because I said not to do it. It drives me batty. The funny thing, though, 
and, and, and I've witnessed this with other families and I've experienced it in my family. The more we learn about grace and give it, the less our kids push up against the fence. It's rules are there not to be grumpy, mean, slam on people because you broke the rules. Rules, rules are there for wisdom, for safety. And as you get tired of maintaining that as a mom, do it anyway. And when we do that, the more we understand and actually receive for ourselves God's grace because it's like we're in it together. Number four, you're going to feel frustrated. You're going to want to yell. You're going to want to scream. And maybe you're going to give in and do it. That does not mean you quit. This is not a one and done deal. This is not a, well, Paul, I tried it. I blew it. I'm no good at this. I'm not going to try anymore. No. Keep trying. Keep trying. Do it anyway. Like I said, the more you practice, the better you get from when you first started practicing. This is a tiny step deal. Take the tiny steps. Number five, take the tiny steps. It's going to feel so small. Like, is this always the situation? But it won't always be the same. Take the tiny steps of giving grace, of being forgiving, of letting your kids know, not in a high and mighty, I'm better than you way, but letting your kids know, I forgive you. And you can help them learn how to give grace to each other. I mean, one of our family things, I was always taught, and, and, and this is kind of a generational thing, I think. I was taught that you were just supposed to say, I, I'm, I'm sorry, when you're done, when you did something wrong. And you're just supposed to um, forgive because somebody said, I'm sorry. And when I was younger, that was baloney. When I was younger, I said the words because I was that polite child, but I didn't think the thought. And so... As I'm trying to figure out how to help my own kids understand how to really do this and be genuine, the the challenge became, I don't want you to say it yet. I want you to be genuine. I want you to feel it. I want you to calm down. But when you calm down, before we go on and do anything else, you need to forgive your sister. You need to ask for forgiveness. See, number six, be real. The more fake we are, the more we kind of try to have like a, a, well, I'm doing the God thing and I'm, I'm, I'm showing how, how forgiving I am. I'm being graceful because God was graceful. Well, our kids can see through that. They see who we really are. And they're going to pick up and learn and do who we really are. Not who we try to act like. So be real. If you blow it, own it. Name it and claim it and say, wow, that was not graceful on my part. And I'm really sorry when it's real, when you're being genuine. And the final thing, number seven, be willing to ask for forgiveness too. Our kids aren't necessarily just going to learn by watching us do it. They get to practice it too. You get to say, wow, mom just blew it. Or, you know when I said that yesterday? That was wrong. I shouldn't have said it that way. I shouldn't have said that. I didn't mean it that way. I saw instantly how your eyes changed and what my words meant to your heart. And I wanted to take it back when I was, I was too angry in the moment. And I'm sorry. Please forgive me. When you do that, you give them permission to be graceful people themselves. And our kids are rooting for us. They really are. Up until the teen years. In the teen years, they kind of are in their, their moments where you know they need to prove themselves. But... The sooner you start it, the better you off, off you are. Just ask for forgiveness too. 
Now, I had a pastor who helped me understand, like, in a, in a practical way how to help little kids. Now, this is more for little kids. He, in his own family, was trying to practice grace because what he did was he wasn't trying to be unreal. He just wanted to spell it out for his kids. He said he looked for opportunities where his kids didn't deserve grace. And then he would give forgiveness in a way that they would understand. So, for example, you've just had a big fight. Everybody's been all upset. Maybe you were planning on going to the ice cream store. Or you wanted to go out to a favorite dinner or whatever, but the kids have just lost it. Now, there are times you do, in fact, have to stick to your guns and make the punishment be what you said the punishment would be. Because otherwise, the punishment is fake. But what you do for grace is sometimes you say, so, we talked about going to the ice cream place. We were going to go get some ice cream at Rita's or at Baskin Robbins. And um, you don't really deserve that right now. You know that, right? I mean, you totally mouthed off to me. But Jesus gives me grace and forgives me because he loves me so much that he gave his own life for me. And there's nothing I wouldn't do for you, kid. So... Today, I'm going to give you grace, and we're going to go to ice cream anyway. This is a way, a concrete way, for parents to help little kids begin to understand grace. And as you do that, and I've practiced it with my own kids after I heard him do that, and my oldest is now 18, and I asked her about it just to be clear. I asked her, was that helpful at all? And she said, yeah. So I want you to understand this is, this is tried and practiced. Um, and, and for reference, occasionally failed. But with your little kids, this helps lay the work, lay the groundwork. Now, with teenagers, with teenagers, you need to be heart to heart. You know, you need to be going, look, let's, I don't want to hold on to this. I don't want to be angry anymore. And I, I want to practice being forgiving. So I'm going to, I'm going to forgive you today. I'm going to give you grace. Let's go get some ice cream. You know, that has to be more subtle. With, with little kids, you, you, you kind of have to spell things out more clearly because they don't get A plus B plus C plus D equals whatever. They don't, they don't always see the pieces of the puzzle. As parents, we help them see the pieces of the puzzle. We actually help in brain development, believe it or not, as we do that. But with adult, uh, not adult kids, well, sometimes adult kids, but with older kids, they have, they have the groundwork there already. What you now have to do is make it real and apply to now. Ladies, I just value you so much, and I know you can do this. Grace is a weird word, and it's, a, it doesn't, it's been losing its meaning, so when we read it in the Bible, we don't always understand it. But I hope this has helped you. I hope this is a, is a blessing to you. Now, if you're interested in getting together with other mamas and just talking online with other mamas who are struggling, who are stressed, who need prayer, who also love to encourage, who also love to lift up one another, you are welcome to join the Bible Momming group on Facebook. Just look it up. It's just called Bible Momming. Put it in the search. And please, if you if this podcast touched your heart, if this was a benefit to you, I love five stars. I really do. <laughs> I get it if it's not a five star, but I would love it. Uh, please leave a review. That's just, it's it's dynamite on the internet and helps people just go, oh, I found that now. That would be very helpful. I've enjoyed this time we have together. I know you have plenty of things to do and many options. So thank you for listening. Remember, love is patient, love is kind, and that is never more real than in our families. God bless you and have a great week.